I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Rock Talk. Three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. So we are still Grok Talk, and uh, we're still here, 12, 13, 2014, 12, 13, 14, yep, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, episode, episode, segment four. Correct. Four. Correct. Now, four. Four. Well, I thought you were going all Ferguson on us. You were starting to raise no, your hands. Oh, or- Castro. Please, Castro. Castro. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was up. Okay. The choir director. <laughs> okay. Well, this is Rock Talk, brought to you by GraniteRock.com and the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. <laughs> Susan's thrilled. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter by searching Granite Rock. <laughs> Listen to us on Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, there and iHeartRadio. Be careful. That thing, it, that, that, ugh, that telescopes. So let's be very cautious with that. Hmm. Hit us with the soft end, please. Oh, my. Thank you. All right. So very... Uh, I have animated. Just em- I have just empowered you. Animated debate. I'm yeah. moving back. And, and <laughs> I know how far it stretches. You can't get that far away. It's uh, <laughs> she has reach. Okay, so she's probably I- armed as well. So aren't we all? Yes, we are. I have a question for for anybody that's out there listening too. If you want to try to answer the question, um, because now I actually am doing three different things at one time. I haven't been able to really look over the LSRs as well as I should. And I would like to get a count, if anybody can do that, on the number of tax fee, you know, new tax, new fee, new regulation, you know, monetary thing. <coughs> aren't, that they all, aren't they all related to either money or, no, or, or regulations? Not all of them, but I would love to know because... Income I tax think, is coming back. Yes, they're talking about that one. I mean, so we have the House majority, right? We Republicans have the House majority, ha, ha, ha. And uh, we have Republican. I mean, Putin. You pu- you put out Susan the fact that he has a a, a, f- a tax now for motorcycle instruction. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to charge what a tax to you know motorcycle education. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a user fee. fee. Hmm. Go ahead again. I'm sorry. If you take if you take the the state class, don't they already charge a fee for that? You know, I'm not a motorcycle, but uh, you no, know. No, you're not. You're you're so you're, you're a human. A <laughs> uh-huh. Not a motorcycle person. Right. Okay. So there's, a, yeah, there probably already is. But you know, this is New Hampshire. You have to have a tax on the fee or a fee on the tax or. You want to talk? Yeah, let me turn off the right thing. If you, if you want to learn how to ride a motorcycle in New Hampshire and you want to obtain your um, endorsement on your driver's license, um, a lot of people come from out of state to New Hampshire to take the motorcycle course because in Massachusetts it's, I don't know, 300 bucks or something. And in uh, New Hampshire, I think it's $100 or whatnot. So, um, of course, we haven't seen the language uh, that goes along with this LSR, but it talks about a fee on in-state motorcycle uh, education. So maybe they're going to ramp it up um, to to equal that that they charge out-of-state people. I don't know, but good Lord, don't take the class. Practice in your yard. Go down and take the course at the at the DMV. This is, so they're basically trying to establish a cartel like they do with driver's education. It's a motorcycle mm. tell. Okay. It's not a cartel. It's a, it's it's a, a motorcycle, motorcycle tell. tell. Okay. So is this like the canoe and... Uh, kayak tax they wanted to pass a few years yes. ago. Yes. I mean, uh, and no, this you is know the that thing. started in my committee in our R and D, and you know how that started out. R and D being not uh, resources, what I'm used recreation, to. and development you. committee, right? So this guy comes in with this great idea that we're going to just sell stickers for uh, canoes and you know those kind of uh, vessel uh, for out of staters. 
right? So we discussed that in committee, and um, we sort of, I was always against any tax, even if it was hitting out-of-staters, but it was harder to defend it, certainly. Well, it morphed within that session, within that year session. <laughs> Hell no. It's not out-of-staters. Now it's it's everybody. <laughs> it's everybody, so they're going to try to. Like you couldn't see that Yeah, coming. no, no yeah. kidding, you know. So, and, and it passed. It passed. We stood up on the uh, the floor. I, one of the bills, my God, they all go into one, one mindset here. But I remember we brought it to the floor and we talked about it and said, you know, this is how this really started. And now look at what we're doing. And uh, so now we, we have that too. So the whole process, man, is just so, it's just a So you got to register your dinghy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> how ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a sticker on your dinghy? I don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It says I'm, Chiquita. I'm lo- <laughs> Rule number one is passing before my eyes. Hey, you're the one who said we're not regulated by the FCC. <laughs> I know, but you are regulated by me. By the That's GG. True. That's true. The GG. I don't know. This thing is depressing. I'm getting well, depressed, guys. And, and again, it goes back to what we see is that slow inversion of the relationship between the citizenry and the government. The yeah. island's tipping over. Yeah. yeah well, it's maybe, sinking. Well, <laughs> Again, we were created as a land where citizens happened to have, the citizens had a government to do some things that the citizenry did, either didn't want yeah. to do or it was best done by a government. Because as conservatives, we like an ordered society. The problem is, is that as that government turns and Flipped says it. more and more into our lives, it's no longer an ordered society. Mm-hmm. It's becoming a legalized bar Mm -hmm. society where all of the, instead of relying on the inside governorship of us all that says this is right, this is wrong, you know, the little guy on your shoulder, the the progressives have said you don't need to obey any morality at all. But then they've gone with the external morality of progressivism, which is the steel bars of law. Yes, thank you. Steel bars that that hem you in, sure. and you can have complete freedom, but only within no. the, I mean, with the they, cage that they are building. They have effectively taken a citizenry with a government and turned it up yeah. to a government with citizenry. Right, and, and we've let it happen. And how they did it? How they did it is they go right through. They aim right at the virtues. They aim right at tradition, and they they eat it out from the inside. Um, there's you know um, Hayek had to, had has a whole idea of of uh, an ordered society is based on tradition, and he's he's uh, he's with if if you have all of these institutions, these government institutions in there, and they start stepping down, society has to step up. The inverse is correct, and that's what you guys are talking about here. When they start taking away the the criticizing and mocking religion, mm-hmm. the family, um, all of the cultural institutions we hold dear, the traditions. All of a sudden, all of those charities, they go away. Who's going to step in? Oh, well, big government steps in, and, they, and it feeds itself over and over again. And so to reverse it, if you, we'd have to take down the government. I, and I don't mean, like, literally take down the government. I mean, ratchet it back. <laughs> ratchet take it back. back our rights. Take back our rights. But that means civilized society and, 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 and churches and charities, they have, there's, there's going to be that void, and that has to step up, right. and people need to participate in their communities again. And help out your neighbor, and not just wave at them, you know, as they're they're struggling to shovel the, their their uh, driveway. You go over there and you help them out, and that's and, that's and the problem. Absolutely, I think, and in, in this is the place where Granite Grock and and people like Susan and and uh, Kimberly and all you guys out there that are ready to put that word forth. We have to empower the citizenry again to take back what is theirs, to let them understand that this is yours, this That's is right. ours. I'm yeah. going to take one exception to what Scott said, because it gave me the implication, as you were talking, that people just stopped doing this, so government had to come in. I would disagree in that since the time of Wilson, and especially with FDR, you saw that inversion starting to happen, where it was government crowding out. Because of the that foreign political philosophy called progressivism, and it really was is a foreign, non-American, un-American philosophy. That's right. Yeah. Um, that has said only government can be good and has crowded out all of our, what used to be parts of our civil society. No, no, they used to do all this That's stuff. exactly right. And if I said and, and implied something else, that was a mistake. I, I didn't mean to do that. No, 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 no. I, but what, I, I, yeah, I, I understood Scott to 
say exactly what Skip was trying to say. You guys are in violent agreement. Right. <laughs> well, now it's illegal to feed homeless people. Yes, it is. It is. Yep. Uh, and if you and if you do decide you want to feed homeless people, it has to be whatever the hell. Um, what's her name? Mrs. Obama wants you to have. So you you can't feed homeless people. You can't give food away. But you, you could feed homeless people if you have a regulation. If you meet regulations, you could feed them. Commercial kitchen. Yep. Yeah. So so they make it so difficult mm-hmm. to do the right thing that that um, yeah, it becomes illegal to to be helpful. It becomes illegal to be good. It becomes illegal to be compassionate. Yep. And and. When they shut down the little kids' lemon stand, lemonade stands and they shut down um, kitchens uh, at churches for the poor, it makes it kind of um, disheartening to even want to try again. So then the government steps in and says, well, we have to do this. Yes, and that's very interesting, too, um, what you just said. There's Robert Higgs is this economist who, who coined the term uh, ratchet effect, and he was talking about the military-industrial complex and how it, it ratchets up. It never goes back. If, once you give one bit... You know, you give the government a little bit of, 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 of space in the in military, more money, it's not going to go back, and a little bit more, a little bit more. But it also goes to the, 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 the cultural space as well, is what you just pointed out. So once they, once they regulate uh, lemonade stands, it's not going to go back. Once they regulate, you, you know, you can't, Albon Pan, I haven't heard this, I'm waiting for it. Albon Pan is known for, for giving um, um, bags and bags of their, left, their daily leftover breads and goods to charities. Sooner or later... Sooner or later, they're not going to be able to do that, and they're just going to throw it into a dumpster. Well, they can't do that now at Dunkin' Donuts or any places like that. They've been told by New Hampshire, at least in New Hampshire, because we were trying to put together a way to, to uh, in Belknap, to get go to different Dunkin' Donuts and get stuff to bring them to kitchens and stuff. So we could. So they can't do that now. Then. No, it's they cannot do it, and they are told that you you can that business is liable. If they do not throw out those goods. Okay, now yes, I, that, I, I did not I know just, that. I was speculating that no, that no, was going to happen. True. It already happened. Can, the ratchet effect. Can you is get us is. some information on that? Because this is the first I've heard of that. Well, uh, like I said, when I was in Alton, <coughs> um, the the manager there is no longer there. But uh, I went into an active discussion with him about a year ago to try to. Um, I said I will come here. You know before you close, because I was living at that time close, and I will pick them up and I'll deliver them around, you know, whether it's Laconia or somewhere, you know, a couple times a week. Just, I wouldn't be able to do it every day. And uh, also there was uh, farms, farms in the area that feed that stuff to their animals, believe it or not. And evidently it's pretty good for them, you know, some of that stuff. So hey, This is one of those cases where you want to try to get local action against the state, like you would state action against the government, and force them to defend that. Mm-hmm. You want to do something in your town, you, you make a statute in your county, you get your delegation to approve it, and then you force the state to fight you on it and make it public and let the people know, because we didn't even know. Yeah. You know, that's outrageous. Yep. I bet you they'd win. It yep. could be, it could be, but it's it was such a um, logistical nightmare. And in this manager, because uh, I, I went a few times about it, a couple times about it, Evan didn't call uh, called his, you know, whatever w- the franchise, right? Uh, who were then told absolutely not. All the product has to be disposed of in the receptacle um, at the end, at the close of business. So and Dunkin' Donuts could certainly do that as a as a. A company thing, because a lot of companies, because of their brand, they don't allow anything that doesn't meet a specific degree of quality to, for public consumption. But I mean, this would be a voluntary thing, sure. and I don't see how people, you know, really in They'd the grand scheme, they would throw it away. Absolutely. And people would be like, you know, even people on the left, I would think, of all people, would be like, no, They're that's quiet. bad. We should, you know. They're quiet about it. Well, I know people that actually dump, go into the dumpsters in these fast food Well, maybe that's why they wanted to do it, so that the homeless the people and the unemployed can find a meal. Uh, uh-huh. you know. Well, here's the deal. We have become, a, are we becoming a society that used to do as we please until we ran into some explicit barrier to now where we, it's flipped, where we have to explicitly ask permission of our government yes. to be able to do something. Yeah. And in the land of the free, is that where we want to be? And, that, and that's, that's being inculcated at the lowest level. I mean, it's, it's to the point where, where uh, the young people, I work, where I work, there's, there's a lot of young people that are very smart people, but they, they automatically think, can we do that? 
where do we get permission to do that? And it's 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 at that level. It's it's the inverse again. It's the inverse of of yeah. You, you know, you keep running in until here, it's in here. That's yeah. where you get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those, yeah. Those, those those kids those kids need to listen to Michael Bolden more often. We don't need no stinking permission to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, let me. I just want to add because I um I just looked up and Manchester, New Hampshire has uh, a city is a city that doesn't allow people to feed the homeless. And um, what's that? It's, it's Manchester, New Hampshire. I'm looking it up right now. I looked it up right now for as uh, the National Coalition of Homeless. Think about. about Manchester, but but the thing is, um, part of the part of the reason restaurants probably don't want to do it as well is because of potential liability. Because yeah. you know, some scumbag lawyer yep. is going to be right up front and sue sue the restaurant if, God forbid, the person got sick who got the free food from the restaurant. That's yep. true. That's that's, right. That was part of the discussion, absolutely. But my question was, is yep. if you had a person that signed up, because I, I told this guy that, um, I forget what days it was, I would come down, I would take the boxes, I would sign off, you know, that I picked up the boxes, and I would bring them, because there was a while that I was bringing stuff um, to the, the clinic, not the clinic, the food place in Concord. I was delivering some food around the holidays to them. And... Uh, I was, there was in so dire need. I mean, this place was full of people. It was kind of really just, I thought, oh my God, that's terrible. Which is what made me go to Dunkin' Donuts to see if I could get a couple mornings of breakfast from them, you know. But um, that, that liability issue was evidently the reason why the franchise said no. So I went back and said, well, what if I signed for it? You know, so that it's not just anybody coming in to get the food and do whatever with it. That the food was going from there to this 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 you know, kitchen, and thought, no, they wouldn't touch it. Yeah, so. and, and, you know, I, I think that we have marched far afield from what de Tocqueville saw in the middle 1800s, where he was just in awe of the civil society, and that's the, 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 the middle part that we are losing rapidly here in the United States. We have government, which was supposed to be small and limited, buffered, and what was supposed to be buffer the people from the government was this vast expanse of civil society and civil organizations like uh, the Red Cross or this or that and everything else, where citizens would gather together, band together, help somebody yeah. or something out for a while, and then disband. But it's like you said with the ratcheting effect, mm -hmm. Scott, that government com comes in, solves a specific problem, and then the people inside that <coughs> solving situation go... Oh, we got to keep our jobs. What else can we exactly. do? Exactly, and that's where the administrative state starts running amok, right? Yeah. Because all right, we have this department, and we we did what we we're supposed to do, but we we need we need a new charter, yeah. and so we they start going on, and it's become self serving. Yeah, and the last two years, I've seen more and more people and more uh, papers, and even a couple of books talking about the administrative state. In that, you know, maybe we won the Cold War against communism and Marxism, but now we're in the new war against the an overbearing administrative state of bureaucracies that uh, that that just believe that they know better than us and the person I talked to last night was saying the same thing that the legislation legislature was being overrun by folks in the unions the public employee unions that are now bending the legislation for their own selves so it's becoming a circular pattern and he's very concerned 300 million people with an administrative state headed by 535 people and their minions. That's an administrative state. 300 million people have given up control of their lives and their wallets and their goodness to 535 people and their flunkies that take time off from work and go stand out on the steps of the Capitol and protest. Oh, absolutely, and and they look at you incredulous when when you question them. I mean, the Koskinen, um, when Koskinen uh, testified. Oh, I mean, he he personified the smugness and the self righteousness of all of these bureaucrats. Of like, well, how dare you question me? I'm protecting you. Yeah, you don't know the, your place. This is the IRS commissioner testifying in front sure. of Congress over the lowest learner uh, yeah. targeting. Yeah. It's it's Kabuki theater on a Potemkin stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, very well put very well put so uh, and you know as a even in my little hamlet on the budget committee how 
dare I cut any money? How dare I not give raises? How dare I demand that you pay as much as I am for my health care? Mm-hmm. How dare you do this? How dare you do that? You are a cold-hearted, it's all about the quality of life, Skip. What is it that you don't get? Yeah, well, tell that to the pensioner down the street that's about to lose her, the widow, that's about to lose her house because you're just going to finally jack up the taxes that are finally going to put her out on the street. Mm-hmm. Who's being cold-hearted? You're supposed to serve us, not the way around. We are not your wallets. Mm -hmm. And yes, government is supposed to provide services. But you know something? Sometimes we should be able to do stuff for ourselves. Like our park and and recreation director at the time would go on over to the backside of Belknap Mountain to uh, the ski area up there. Uh, All of a sudden I've gone blank in the name uh, in Belknap County. To go, I mean it's a 10 minute trip to go aggregate tickets so that uh, Guilford residents could then come see him in the government office and get a discount. It's like, what, you parents can't get together, go as a group and buy these on your own for your kids? We need you to aggregate tickets to go to our Red Sox. The parents are too stupid to rent a bus and do all this stuff. That, I mean, I could it's go on. It's the bus tax. That's you will actually go on and on. But the truth is, is the government is choosing to use entitlement mentality for the masses rather than empowerment and and until that's flipped back uh we're going to have nothing because the people that don't want to work why should they well well, we we saw that in the mary landrew thing i posted that sheet of paper that's that basically said if you don't vote for mary landrew here's all the list of entitlements that are going to be taken away from you it's like there's no chance that this is going to be taken away from you in one Mm. in one senate race trust me but that's the scaremongering that was used. Sure. And it basically proved Romney was right about the 47%. Period. Just like the war on women, it was merely kabuki theory. Well, we could use it the other way around, right? Our side could simply say, well, it, those entitlements will get taken away. They will get it taken away at some point because we cannot and maintain a $18 trillion debt and that's plus. Right. Which is, what, what, what was it just reported? This, this, the Cromney bus adds another, what, three point something trillion to it? Yes. So, so that, the entitlements will go away. It's, uh, do you want it the, the nice way, it's, or do you want it the hard way? We said this for years and years and years. When you, when the, when the left and the progressives on the right go, we need to give these people this thing. What happened with Medicaid expansion? People who already had insurance in New Hampshire just moved over. <laughs> What's going to happen when there's no money? You're going to be left swinging in the cold. We keep telling you, you're the best chance you have at success. Mm-hmm. The government's going to screw you the right. first chance they have to. And, and I will say this, and I know, having run a daycare. See the people who came in under the state aid. They are the least grateful people that I had at least 80% of the time. It's not true. There were some, true. some single moms. They needed somebody to watch over their kid, but they always tried hard. They made sure the kids were clean. Their clothes were, they may not have been new, but they were certainly stitched up and patched and all of that stuff. They were trying to work a part-time job, going to school at the same time. And I'm glad to say 20% of those folks became self-sufficient. The others were always running around scheming, how do I get more stuff right. for yep. free? Yep. Right. And I will dispute any uh, left-wing progressive about, oh, you're, 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 you're making this up. No. Because I had the war with DCYF over some of these folks. We're running out of time. I want to get closing remarks from Mike and Kimberly. Mike, you still there? I'm still here, Steve. Thirty seconds. Finish up. I'm actually du- I'm actually dummying up a uh, Republicans Anonymous logo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're you're working. You're working in India. Uh, uh, Kimberly- I'm, I'm working in India. All right. So uh, you know, I, I mean, basically, we have to get government back under control where it works for us. We have to starve the beast of money. We can't just fix our state, although we have the prime responsibility to fix our state, we have to band together with like-minded people in other states to fix their states and get to a critical mass, whether it's a convention of the state, which some people don't like the idea of, or something else, but to band together to tell the federal government, no more money. All right, Kimberly. Um, I, I think it, we, we're, we're really at a point where people need to start paying more a closer attention. There's 830 LSRs as of the other day that Susan had posted. A lot of it is the same crap that they tried to pass last time Worse. that was offensive to the people of New Hampshire. And everyone needs to pay attention because if you're not paying attention to what's going on, that's when your rights get taken away. Okay, mm-hmm. Scott. 
Yeah, and and to pick up right on that, and that's the the repulsive part is the blithe insouciance from a lot of the, the our, our fellow citizens walking around, not giving a rat's of what's really going on until it really hits the fan. Then they pay attention, and then we say, you know, I have I have friends that I talk politics with, and I can shut down a party with the best of them, but uh, <laughs> um, um, and you know they they think I'm just some crazy loon that you know, I see all this stuff, and oh you're you're crazy, it'll all just work out. Well, wait, you know, math has a way of of, of writing it. Yeah, math is universal. Yeah. You? I, I just told oh, you're not? Are you okay. not? Where, where'd you go? Oh, I turned you down. Sorry, okay. please you, go. I just think it's important Same. for people to not get overwhelmed like I'm feeling right now, that um, there is a way to stay active in the debate and to not let the uh, the establishment overrun, you know, what your perception is, is of your power, right? Okay, uh, we're going to do skip real quick, and then we'll go to... There is Susan. no more waiting for the next Washington or the next Ronald Reagan. We... Are our next Reagan, Susan? Screw DC, save New Hampshire. <laughs> All right, there you go. That is <laughs> this week's crock talk. Now we still have another minute or so. Um, What's your th- last thirty seconds? Uh, well, I, we are prepared Close to be. Close us out. We are prepared to be the vanguard and the tip of the spear, and we need lots of people to join us. And we want you to reach out to us, and we want you to share, and we want you to give us corroboration. You want we want you to not just tell us stories, but point us to people who will back them up, so that we can go public. Okay, and then we will. And we will, and we will back you. And if you want to come with us, that's fine. If you need to be anonymous, that's great. We don't have a problem with that. They can crap on us all we want. We are not going to lay down. We are not going to stop. This is our war, and we are going to wage it. Never give up. Never give up, never surrender. What movie? That's Winston Churchill. No, it's also Galaxy Quest. (laughs) 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 Of course, the way to end the show. Never surrender. (laughs) Never surrender. All right, there we go. All right, so we'd like to thank everybody who joined us today by phone. Mike from India, uh, Kimberly Morin from wherever it is she is in her bivouac, uh, digging up what independents dig up about either side of the party. Of course, everybody that came today, Susan Olson, Jane Cormier, Scott Morales, and Skip Murphy, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to come down here and and spend two hours with us uh, sharing some some very important thoughts that everybody needs to cling to. Um, is that we got a lot of work ahead of us. It's going to be ugly. We're not going to win every battle, but we should win the ones that matter, and we won't know what those are until we get out there and fight. So we would like very much for you guys out there to, to call us, to email us. Uh, email's better for me, just as an example, but um, to reach out and help us you know, make a difference. Maybe we don't get there tomorrow or next year, but we will get there. But we can't get there unless we start walking. So this is Grok Talk. We'll be back next week. We are off the week of Christmas, but we'll be back after New Year's. So you guys have a great weekend and hang in there. We're done. Asked whether she still supports Obamacare, Senator Jean Shaheen said, Yes, I do continue to support the law. We're beginning to see some positive results. How can Senator Shaheen say we're seeing positive results when 22,000 of our neighbors have already lost their health insurance? What's worse, the Boston Globe reports the state's only health insurance provider radically reduced the number of hospitals in their network, forcing some people to drive over an hour for lab work, even when there's a hospital within a few miles of their home. When pressed about lack of access, Shaheen said... There are some hospitals that are not covered, unfortunately, and um, I I certainly hope that's going to change. Jean Shaheen promised us we could keep our doctors and our health care coverage. Now she hopes we can get to a local hospital? Call Senator Shaheen at 603-647-7500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Senator Jean Shaheen said, if you like your current health plan, you can keep it. That's not true, Senator. 22,000 New Hampshire citizens have been kicked off their insurance plans. Hospitals in Rochester, Concord, and Portsmouth, they aren't allowed to provide care under the exchange. Senator, you were wrong in your comments. You should apologize for your misleading remarks. I'm calling Senator Shaheen at 750-3004 and telling her I want my doctor back. You should, too. Paid for by SaberPack.org, not authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. 
All of the music on this program comes to us through Creative Commons licensing from Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the speakers, and not necessarily those of CNHT, GraniteRock.com, or anyone else for that matter. Rock Talk.